Sometime around the early 1200s, a man named Manco Capac founded the city of Cusco. Fast forward to the year of 1418, and an enemy army of 40,000 is marching on the city of Cusco, and in response, the emperor has fled the city. But the emperor also left his third son, Inca Yupanqui, to hopelessly defend the city. But God intervened, and the battle was victorious. 22,000 enemy soldiers were killed, and Yupanqui only lost 8,000 men. 20 years later, the emperor finally returned, and in fear of his son, officially abdicated the throne and granted his son a new name, Pachacuti. And Pachacuti began a great expansion, building the kingdom of Cusco into an empire. By the year of 1493, under the reign of Huayna Capac, the empire reached its greatest height. Though by the year of 1524, two problems had arose. The first was disease. This disease turned people's skin black and made spots appear on its face and hands. We don't know what this disease was, but it was possibly smallpox or measles. The population of the empire dropped greatly, possibly by 90%. The second problem was the succession. That same year, Huayna Capac died of this mysterious disease, along with his chosen successor. So with no clear vision on who would succeed Huayna Capac, the rest of the empire was left to decide who would lead. The other two sons of Huayna Capac, Atahualpa and Huascar, were perfect candidates, but there were a few problems. First, Huascar's mother was Incan, while Atahualpa's was not Incan. Huascar had the support of the Cusco elite, while Atahualpa had the support of the battle-hardened army. The civil war began in 1529 and continued till 1532, at which point Atahualpa's army defeated Huascar's force and captured the city of Cusco. Despite Atahualpa had won the civil war and was now leader of the Incas, he faced a new problem, and that problem was none other than Spain. The Spanish crown had sent a force of 168 men under the command of Francisco Pizarro to conquer the Inca empire. The Spanish forces lured Atahualpa into a trap, capturing him and killed 7,000 people and around 900 were taken prisoner. Only one Spanish soldier was wounded. The Spanish would later call this massacre a battle. Atahualpa initially offered a ransom for his release. Francisco Pizarro initially accepted the ransom, but eventually, though he didn't want to, Pizarro was forced to convict the Inca emperor of treason, and after converting him to Christianity, executed him in a public ceremony. The Spanish crown at first planned to have Pizarro be the sole governor of the Inca Empire, but eventually gave part of it to Diego de Almagro, Pizarro's expedition partner. But some tensions were rising between Pizarro and Diego de Almagro. Though with those problems, they would face others in their midst. Even after the Spanish had annexed the empire, over the next 20 years, they would face between 20 to 30 rebellions. And eventually, Pizarro and Diego were fighting their own civil war, as well as fighting the Inca resistance. And when Pizarro finally killed Diego, Diego's son took up the feud. Finally, on June 26, 1541, 20 men supporting Diego's son attacked Pizarro's mansion in Lima. Francisco Pizarro, the man who conquered an Inca empire for golden Christianity, and killed millions of people to do so, died. And that's when the Inca's reputation changed. As the Spanish raised Incan temples and built churches on their foundation and cracked down on the Incan religion, people who had previously hated living under Incan rule began telling stories of Incan heroes standing up for the people against the Spanish. Incan culture, architecture, and history are a source of great pride in the empire. And eventually, the Spanish would reform the Inca Empire into the modern country of Peru. But that's a story for another time. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check me out over on Patreon.
The link is in the description.